Hi, this is Marcy Lamberson, and today I am going to be making a gum drop bead for you. Yeah, gum drop, like in the candy. And to make the sugary outside of the gum drop, I'm going to be using this clear frit. It says crystal clear, and it's what's going to make the sugary appearance for you. I believe this is Valcox frit, but I'm not positive. Uh, that's the frit that I tend to use, if at all possible. And there are others out there that should work just fine too, as long as they are crystal and clear. If you do not have any, you can take a glass rod, heat it up really hot, and plunge it into a coffee cup with icy water in it, and the, ice, and the icy water will crack the glass, and then you can um, get the fruit out of it, and it will be uneven in different sizes. So your next step is to go to Salvation Army, or the equivalent, and get a coffee bean grinder that you will promise me that you will never, ever, ever use for food consumption. And with that, you put your frick pieces inside and you grind them up and you get them just the size that you want them. But don't ever use it for food again after you've used it once with glass. That kind of makes sense, doesn't it? So I am heating up a transparent emerald green and I am laying it on my 1 16th rod semi-evenly. And we're going to make kind of like a little rounded cone for our gumdrop shape. I'm making it towards the end of the rod for a pretty good reason. I uh, tend to cut corners sometimes. Okay, I've admitted it. And the way that I cut corners is sometimes I will dunk my bead into the frit. The bead can only barely be warm when you do that, otherwise you lose the shape and you have to melt the frit in and start over again, which has happened to me before, so I know this from experience. But if you cool it down and just heat up the outside, sometimes you can cut a little bit of a corner. Or you could take your frit and be normal like most people and pour some out and uh, roll it in your frit that way too. Roll your bead in your frit, which is probably the smarter way to do it. I'm scared I'm gonna be teaching you a bad habit here. So I have dip and go blue sludge on my uh, mandrel and it's 1 16th, I think I told you that. And I'm just evening up the glass a little bit. I put too much on one side and not enough on the other. So I'm just slowly rotating it to even up the glass and I'm cooling it a bit. That's why I'm holding it above the flame as I'm rotating. And I can see I'm going to need to add some more near the base towards my fingers. But I'm cooling it down and by cooling it down, I'm watching the color of the glass <laughs> that was something. So I'm going to add a little bit more at the very bottom and then marver it a tiny bit. Just going slowly, adding some extra glass. And rotating my bead. So of course you can do gumdrops in lots of colors. I'm trying it with a transparent along with the clear glass. I personally think that that might make a good gumdrop, but I have not made gumdrops before with opaque glass, and that would be interesting also. I think it would give it a different look. I think either a transparent or a translucent glass would make it look more gumdrop-ish to me. So when you're making your gumdrop, you want it a little bit smaller at the top, wider at the bottom, you want a flat base. And you can make the flat base a variety of ways. I have this wonderful tool and they sell similar ones to this or have had them at Carlisle Machinery. This is a slotted paddle, which those of you who have taken classes with me know I use a lot and look how fast that is to just kind of even up the bottom. So I'm gonna let it cool a little bit 
And then I'm just going to heat the exterior of it. And then I'm going to roll it in my container. But the smarter way would be to pour some out. And if I lose the shape of this, then you'll know that I really was an idiot doing this. The finer your frit, the more sugar-like it will look. This frit is a medium size, so it's not going to be quite as fine as I would like. This is going to be some pretty thick sugar on it. So I just heated it up a little bit and rolled it in. And then I'm just going to barely heat that glass so it attaches. If I heat it up too much, what's going to happen is that it will melt in and then I'm going to have to do it all over again. So this is, this is what it looks like. I can try and spot heat some areas and add a little bit more if it looks like it's lacking. Add a tiny bit and just a little bit of heat. See how I just get it orange just for a sec. You don't want sharp parts on it, but you want it to stay raised or else it won't look sugary. So I got a little bit on the bottom that I'm going to heat up more. See the angle that I'm using to heat that up? And I'm just pressing it. You can press it with another tool. And I'm going to press the top a little bit too. And it's wearable. And it will be this lovely green with the sugar. And I'll have a picture for you for the tutorial as well. Happy candy making. Catch you later. This is Marcy Lamberson. You can find me on Instagram, Facebook, Oh, all kinds of places. Twitter, Etsy. I'm either Studio Marcy or Marcy Lamberson. Come join me or take my classes. Thanks for joining me. Talk to you later. Bye.